We teamed up with Mike from Games From Scratch to create a two-part tutorial about Guru's tool mode. It's the keyword that lets you run any bit of code in the editor, allowing you to create plugins, scripts you can run anytime to draw in the viewport, and so much more. It's an extremely powerful feature in the engine. We exchanged our videos. You'll have to go to Mike's channel to see mine, and here you're going to see his, an introduction to Godot's tool mode. You'll find the link in the video description. Enjoy and see you on his channel. Hello everybody, this is Mike from the Game From Scratch uh, YouTube channel and GameFromScratch.com website and Nathan has graciously invited me over here to guest post on his uh, channel while he's off doing the same thing on mine. And what we're going to talk specifically about here is programming in the Godot game engine, specifically tools programming. And that may not sound exciting at first, but it really is the lifeblood of most um, games, at least any non-trivial game has and lives by the tools that create it. And the great thing about the Godot game engine is it gives you so many ways to create tools directly in the game engine and to do so in a fairly easy manner. Now there are a number of options there. You could um, buy into native code using GD Native, uh, you could create a plugin, you could extend the source code itself, uh, or you could create a module. But what we're doing today actually is creating a tool script, the easiest of the options. And what this essentially is, is a script that runs within Godot. So basically it's straight up GD script that you know and love already. Uh, but what it allows you to do is basically operate on your scene object. So you can do some quick and dirty um, manipulations using scripts. And we're gonna use a couple different examples here. Specifically, we're gonna look at using the tool keyword, and then we're gonna look at creating an editor script. Two slightly different processes, but using the exact same logic for the most part. So let me just go ahead and create this new project right here. Uh, so create, our, yeah, create the folder. Oh, I already used that one. Let's create a folder, create the project, and load her up. All right, so first things first, we're gonna to need to create a basic scene. We're gonna be just doing a very simple 2D project. We're gonna create a sprite, and what we're gonna do for this first example is have it so that using the tool script, we've got the ability to toggle it to the normal or zero, zero, back to the origin or back to the position it was from. It's a pretty contrived example, but it shows you how you can interact with the tool script and how to go about creating one. So we need that scene to work with. First, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a node for the root of my world, pretty much the way I start everything, to be honest. And then on top of that, I'm just gonna create a sprite. And that sprite, I'm going to just use the uh, default icon. So we'll just go ahead and load that like so, and let's position it off of the origin. And that is essentially our game. Nothing too, too exciting to go on here, but let's go ahead and we'll run this so we can save our scene and set it as the default. So save it. All right. So we'll go ahead. Now, before we continue too much further, I should point out that I am using the final beta, or I hope which is the final beta, of the Godot 3 release. So Godot 3 is hopefully out by the time you're watching this or is going to be out very soon. But if you are using Godot 2, most of what we're covering here still works and it's still the same. Just do be aware that some uh, function names are actually slightly different in Godot 2. So this is specific to Godot 3. You also may see a couple of warnings or errors that aren't really applicable. Those are beta related. Hopefully just ignore those. So as long as your code runs right, we should be good to go. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and create our script. So just attach a normal G, uh, GD script to our sprite object. I will call it uh, mySprite.gd and we'll create it. So hopefully you can see that just fine. And we don't really need any of the defaults that it creates for us. You've probably seen this all before. It's a very standard, uh, the template for a script. Uh, and let's strip it down to its basis because we're not actually going to use any of that stuff. And now we're going to look at how you go about and create a tool. Now, by making it a tool script, all that really does is it allows it to run in the editor, and then it can interact with the different objects in your scenes, and you can do just about whatever you want with it. This is a lot like what you would get in, say, Unity Engine, which basically runs all of its stuff in the, um, the editor as it stands. Well, that isn't really the approach that Godot took. So this allows you to do a lot of what you do in Unity if you wanted to create tools that ran directly in the editor. Now, how do you go about doing this? Well... Here we go, tool, that's it, we're done. All right, end of tutorial, I hope you guys found that you, okay, no, it's not quite that simple, but um, in some ways, yes it is. This basically, uh, this keyword here tags and tells the Godot game engine to go ahead and run this script directly in Godot. And now we're gonna go ahead and actually make it somewhat useful. Let's go and we're gonna create a vector two that we're gonna use to save our previous position. Uh, Position equals a vector 
two, and we'll just start it at the origin, like so. I mean, zoom that guy up a bit. Here, I'll let you see my code completely. Um, and next up, what we're going to do is we want to export out a value, a variable that we can actually manipulate and control directly within the inspector window. In order to do this, we just use the export keyword, give it the hint that it's a type of Boolean, um, and we're going to call it var reset to zero. We'll give it a default value of false. And then we're going to do a set get on this. Basically, this is a function that is called when that value is changed. So when in the editor, we click the checkbox, this will figure um, fire off this function. And the function is called reset zero. And speaking of which, now that we've declared that, uh, we should probably go ahead and actually create that function. So reset zero. Uh, reset zero and importantly it is past the uh, new value so it's going to be past uh, the the value that has changed as a boolean in and if you miss this uh, it will not work correctly um, so next up we want to go ahead and actually check to see if we are running in the editor now this is the part that's different between Godot uh, 2 and 3 earlier you used git tree uh, dot is editor hint I believe was the uh, actual function now it's been moved to engine dot is editor hint and basically this returns true if we are running this in the editor as opposed to in a game and this makes this code only run in the editor so when your game is actually compiled and running on the end user's computer if it's editor code it will never be run all right so if we are in fact running in the editor and then we're just going to do if new var equals true like so and then we'll just save our previous position Our current position uh, self dot position equals oops, vector two. So we're kicking it back to the origin and reset to zero equals true. And then we're going to do otherwise else self dot position equals previous position so in that case we just basically we either go back to the origin or if there is a previous position we snap back to that location I'll show you this in action in a second assuming I didn't actually do any errors and reset to zero equals false all right now one thing to be aware of unfortunately editor tools like what we just created here cannot be debugged in the debugger as it stands now. That is the one sort of downside to working this way. If you do want to do your debugging, you basically handle that through uh, print statements and the Godot console over here. Uh, ignore this tokenizer error that is again related to the uh, beta status. But that is where you'll see errors if any occur. Now we're gonna find out if I managed to do this without typoing. So we head on back here to uh, 2D. Uh, I will. Minimize that guy. So now we will see if we select our sprite, we now have a script variable that we exposed. And when I change this, it fires off. And you see, there we go. We just kicked it back. So you see it updated directly in the editor. So that's what our code is doing. Our code is working on the scenes within the editor. And again, this is where you would do your quick and dirty type tool styling. And then when I click that again, it should kick us back to wherever we were before. And then once again, same deal and back so that shows probably about the simplest semi useful example of using the tool keyword and it really kind of is that simple the biggest downsides really are um, the lack of um, the tool functionality and that i believe there's an inability to call uh, singletons directly which is kind of the other issue of the tools uh, but that can be worked around all right so that is a uh, using the tool now let's look at another option we've got here and this is actually tool scripts and or editor scripts and this is probably something that is probably a, a little bit more commonly used and basically this allows you to basically create um, almost like macros using GD script that can be you know rapidly done to do things on the scene so if you had to uh, bulk rename all of the things in the current scene or you wanted to bulk move everything by a certain amount or you wanted to run through and do uh, collision volumes for everything that was um, a sprite or, or something to that effect this is where um, a nice reusable script is easily created and let's start with a new project so I'm gonna quit back out to the project list yeah sure same close and let's create a new project just to be clean about this. So new project, uh, call you whatever. Let's create the folder. 
and go. And this time what we're going to do is basically instantiate a scene using completely just code. Uh, now, one of the catches is uh, an editor script requires a scene with at least one node in it, and that's pretty much about it. So we're going to just go ahead and actually create that node like so. And this time we're going to work in 3D, and essentially what I'm going to do is mimic uh, Blender's default behavior. What we're going to do is populate a quickie scene of um, you know, a cube, a camera, and a light. And so let's take a look at that process now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we need to create a new um, script. So we head over to the scripts here, and this is another area the um, UI has changed around between two and three. Before you used to be able to run scripts using scene run script. Now it has all been moved into the uh, editor down here. All right, let's go ahead and author our script. So file, new script, and we will call this um, my script gd. And once again, we need to have that tool keyword. Now we're not extending here, we're actually in fact extending editor script, like so. And editor script is pretty much as straightforward as it gets. It's got a function called run, and it's got a member um, for accessing the current scene, and that's pretty much it. Now run is what's going to be called when this script is ready to run, um, like so. And now let's use that. So first we're gonna go ahead and create that cube. So it's a mesh instance dot new and then cube dot set underscore name equal oops not a name it's cube uh, okay um, we will go cube dot mesh so we're just basically creating a cube mesh for our uh, mesh instance it's new. And next up, we want to just add the actual cube to the scene. So, sorry, get scene. That's that one method I told you was in the uh, editor script class we inherited from. Um, and then, so that will give us whatever the currently uh, running or open scene is within the editor. And that's what this script will run on. So the cool thing about this is you can then load a scene, run the script, load a different scene, run the script, and it will work across whatever scenes you actually have open. So we will add the cube as a child. Now the one that's kind of tricky is once you've actually um, dynamically created an object like this for a scene, we need to actually set ownership of it to the scene. So finally, we're gonna go cube.setOwner. And if you miss this part, well, it won't ever show up. So basically there. Now our scene now owns the cube we just created. And we're gonna basically uh, follow this process again. So camera equals camera.new. Uh, camera dot we're gonna move the camera off the origin vector three zero two point five and five point five so we just want to have you know the camera offset a little bit uh, then we get scene once again add child and we will add our camera like so and camera dot look at cube dot translation. So now our camera is pointing at the cube we just created, give it an up vector of the y-axis, like so. And finally, once again, camera needs to be owned, set owner, and get scene, like so. Oops, I didn't mean to save that, but um, yeah, sure. Um, okay, so finally, we are going to add a sun. It's an omni light, like so. Sun dot translate. We're just moving it again off the origin, straight up, two units along the y-axis, and once again get seen. Dot add child sun and sun dot set. Oops, set owner. Get seen. So. Very simple script, it uh, creates a cube in the world, it creates a light in the world, it creates a camera in the world, orients them just like you get when you start up Blender, for example. And we've saved it, it's myscript.gd. It's not attached to anything, it's literally just an item in our, so we could take this, um, this script that we just created, so this my script, and it could be copied into any other project we need. We could reuse it across several projects as we wish. Now the last thing we need to do is go ahead and actually run it. So let's go ahead. And we will do a run. 
and find out if I screwed anything up. And it looks like I did, actually, because my light is not appearing, which is probably useful because this allows me to come over here and show you invalid call, uh, non-existent function, vector in base, uh, editor script, da, da 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 So when you do make a mistake in your code, this is the way you are going to be hunting it down. So let's head on back, find out what I just screwed up. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh, that's what I screwed up, vector three. All right, theory, that should fix it. Uh, let's head on back over. No, so let's, you'll notice it actually created a couple of entities in our scene. All right, let's get rid of those our scene. And finally, let's go ahead and run it. And there you see, it just populated our 3D world with a cube and a light and a camera that's configured. Uh, so that shows you what you can do with editor scripts. And this is really just scratching the surface. This is, you know, uh, for creating just kind of a prototype scene you could go from. But as I mentioned earlier, you could use this for uh, just about anything. You could programmatically navigate through your scene entities and you know populate worlds as you wish, change values as you wish, etc. So it gives you a very uh, quick and easy way of um, you know modifying your game programmatically. And when you start thinking in terms of tools being quick and easy to create, it really opens your mind to the options that are available to you. And then if you start getting you know moving beyond this, the complexity grows beyond you and you're going to probably want to look at something else like um, creating a plugin or a module etc uh, but for a lot of your um, maintenance tasks or um, you know just basically repetitious activities that you're doing over and over again you can probably script or automate them in either one of these manners either using just the tool attribute and doing it um, you know, directly in line with your code or as creating an editor script that you can run on command. So the cool thing again is once again, I could come up here and go scene, create a completely new scene. And then we just go ahead again, you got to populate that node. But once that node's there, I can um, go back over here to my script viewer and we will run that again. And you'll see my new scene is now populated. So we head on back over to it and boom, it's in and going. So both of our scenes are properly populated with our script. So you can see how easily reusable these tools can be and how fast they are to create. All right, that's what we're covering for today. I hope you did find that useful. Um, and if you know, if you did, please do uh, check out uh, Game From Scratch. Hopefully you'll find all kinds of things over there uh, that are to your interest. We've got a lot of uh, Godot related content and other things related to all kinds of facets of game development. And of course, there's Nathan's video that should be up at the same time as this one. And be sure to check that out as well. Hope you enjoyed that and I will see you all later. Goodbye.